social scientists studying gender typically seek one of three different types of knowledge, qualitative, quantitative, or a combination of the two. Qualitative researchers want to understand a unique phenomenon connected with gender. For example, take the New York Radical Women, an actual 1960s group. Why and how did this group form? What were their goals? Who belonged and what are their stories? Quantitative researchers want to explain a more general or society-wide process of cause and effect. For example, why do women's movements in general occur? And what wider impact do women's movements and feminism have on society and politics? Researchers who pursue both types of knowledge view qualitative and quantitative research as being fundamentally similar and that they both involve uncovering cause and effect relationships based on observed facts or empirical data. This concept is called causal inference. Here is an example of a research project based on the combined qualitative quantitative approach. All research projects start with a question. The question here is, why does the Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993 provide a level of support that is lower than demonstrated need? The first task, obviously, is to provide evidence that the benefits provided by the legislation are indeed inadequate. One possible hypothesis is that the ideas about gender held by those involved in the work family policy area, whether legislators, their staff, bureaucrats, interest groups, interest group representatives, and others, are old-fashioned or out of step with economic reality. Specifically, the notions are quite common that women belong in the home, taking care of children, whereas men belong to the spheres of paid work and politics. Yet this does not correspond to the overriding fact of women's major presence on the labor force. Why should this happen? What is the general cause and effect linkage here? In any area, whether social affairs, foreign relations, and others, past policies can have a strong influence on how people in the present time think about new problems in an issue area. So there is often a kind of delayed reaction. The system is generally slow to change. Part of the reason the FMLA provides somewhat inadequate support for work-family balance is that old-fashioned ideas about gender continue to influence policymakers' thinking in this policy area. How can we test this hypothesis? What we need are observable or empirical measures of the concept ideas about gender influencing policymakers. One possibility is to look at statements from policymakers and others made during congressional hearings on relevant policy proposals. This study design is both qualitative and quantitative. The qualitative part comes in identifying statements that express views of gender, in this case separate spheres, the gendered idea, or combined work and family spheres, the gender-neutral idea. The quantitative aspect involves keeping count of the different types of statements. Are there more separate sphere statements in earlier periods? Are there fewer now? This will allow us to know if the hypothesis is supported or not. If we find a lot of separate sphere statements around the time of the FMLA debates, this may suggest support. These are just two examples of statements expressing the gendered idea on the left side and the gender neutral idea on the right side. This language seems gendered since the notion of women working is presented almost as an afterthought when we know that by this time, 1993, a clear majority of women were in the workforce increasingly full time. Also, the suggestion that the wife may be more interested in a child care benefit in essence reinforces the traditional association of women with home and family. In contrast, this statement presents working men as equally responsible for home and family, as such suggesting the gender neutral idea. The term employees rather than 
working women or working mothers reinforces this view. What are the overtime trends in the different types of statements, and what does this st say about our hypothesis? This is the quantitative part. This chart shows the relative incidence of both types of statements in congressional hearing testimony over time. Two dimens dimensions should stand out. First, the overall number of statements expressing either view, and second, the relative numbers of each type. In the 1940s, many women entered the workforce for the first time, taking the place of men called up to fight in World War II. This helps to explain why there is more discussion of work, family, and gender roles than during the 1950s, when many of these women, working women, returned to the home. The fact that there are more gendered statements in the 1940s may indicate discomfort with the idea of women taking on work roles. Then through the remaining time periods, we see an increase in the number of statements of both types which su suggests that the idea of work and gender roles became more salient as more and more women entered the workforce. It is also meaningful that the separate spheres idea is more prominent than the gender neutral idea into the 1970s. The gender neutral idea takes over in the last decade, the 1980s, but separate spheres is still relatively prominent. The implications of the data for the hypothesis are mixed. Gender-neutral statements overtake gendered statements by a wide margin in the 1980s, the decade preceding passage of the FMLA in 1993. However, there are still many gendered statements, suggesting that the notion of separate spheres retained an influence on policymaking, even as the large majority of women were in the workforce. The separate spheres idea could well help to explain shortcomings of the FMLA. If many policymakers still view women in the traditional way, then it might seem justified to have a policy with only very limited work family supports, such as the lack of pay replacement. This is just one example of how to use both qualitative and quantitative approaches to answering a social science research question related to gender. How do we do this kind of research? Once you have a well thought out research question, a hypothesis, a research design, and a potential source of data, there are numerous context-sensitive text analysis software packages that can help you with the data analysis part. These packages allow you to search documents for words or combinations of words and for the surrounding context, and then to organize and keep account of certain phrases and statements. These are just some examples of existing programs.